Soldiers in frilly dresses, Albert Einstein in shorts, a soldier helping a child through the Berlin Wall, or workers painting the Eiffel Tower without security. Make yourself comfortable. Here are some rare photos that you absolutely must see at least once in your life. In 1940, photographer John Topham was visiting the Royal Artillery Coastal Defense Battery at Shornemead Fort in Kent, England. His objective was to photograph the British troops rehearsing for their Christmas charity performance, which in itself was an exceptional sight to capture. With his camera in hand, John Topham expected to see a troop of big guys armed to the teeth with impressive uniforms, but he was struck by an unbelievable surprise. Indeed, he saw a troop of soldiers marching in front of him, all dressed in dresses, tights, makeup and wearing helmets on their heads. The fact is that a few minutes before, these same soldiers were celebrating. Drag shows and pantomimes were popular in the military at the time as a way to relieve stress and have fun during downtime. The soldiers had been called up at the last minute to deal with the approach of Luftwaffe bombers crossing the English Channel to stage raids on southern England. Thus, they did not have time to put on their uniforms. They barely had time to put on their helmets and get ready. So on the battlefield, the troops rushed in dresses and freely dresses. The British wartime government naturally forbade the diffusion of these photos, because they could damage the image of the army by stripping it of all virility and thus stirring up the mockery of the enemies and their allies. The photographer, not understanding what was happening at the time, thought he was hallucinating when he saw such a spectacle before his eyes. But he managed to immortalize an exceptional and very rare scene, which is not likely to be repeated a second time in history. In 1957, this young woman with dark skin entered Harry Harding High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Like many American citizens, the teenager aspired to a very advanced and brilliant education. The problem is that in this photo, the young woman didn't look very happy to be sitting on those benches, and for good reason. She was the first black woman to attend an all-white school in the United States. At the time, racial segregation in the United States was at its heights, so making such an entrance was considered an affront. In the photograph, the young woman was subjected to taunting and harassment from her fellow students, who mocked her with laughter and inappropriate gestures. Despite this, the young woman stood her ground and kept her place on the high school bench, even though she was bludgeoned and harassed for her skin color. Today, the person you see in the picture has aged and looks strangely more confident. She's very happy to have stood up all the taunts she has been subjected to. The proof is that she graduated from one of the best schools in North Carolina. She came out stronger and more confident and that alone was worth it. On June 13, 1936, a German shipyard worker was in Hamburg as he was to attend the launch of the training ship, the Horst Bessel, with other workers. But while all the workers were doing the Hitler salute, August Landmesser decided not to obey the orders and not to perform it, which was obviously seen as an affront. The reason was that he was in love with a Jewish woman named Irma Eckler. Their union was illegal under German law. After this, Landmesser tried to flee to Denmark, but he was found and sent to prison. He was prosecuted for, among other things, impregnating Irma a second time and thus dishonoring the Aryan race. After a stint in prison, he was sent to the army and was presumed killed in a battle in Croatia in 1944. Today, this iconic photograph still travels around the world and August Landmesser became a great figure of the Nazi resistance. You know Albert Einstein, the greatest physicist of the century. You certainly know a lot about his work, especially about his theory of relativity. And it is because he is a very serious man that you have never had the opportunity to see him dressed in anything other than old shabby suits. And yet, you know that our Einstein has a crazy side as evidenced by his legendary grin. We found for you one of the rare photos, maybe even the only one where Albert Einstein is dressed, let's say, rather relatively sexy. Do you want to see it? Then get ready to see a nugget. In this picture, Albert Einstein is sitting on a rock by the sea, wearing a short-sleeved linen shirt and shorts, revealing his thin knees and lower thighs. A first in the history of science, Albert Einstein is accompanied by a journalist who is dressed in a suit. It is necessary to believe that Albert Einstein had, like everybody else, the desire to take a dip in the water and that he knew how to take advantage of his vacations. 
the rascal. And that's not all. If you have an observant eye, you'll probably notice these sublime sandals, revealing the tip of his toes, which give him a very delicate look. For God's sake, admit it, the result is not famous. This look is downright abject. You still prefer him in a suit and you're not the only one, by the way. You have just seen a very rare photo of Albert Einstein, something interesting to show to your physics teacher during your next class presentation. Believe me, you'll knock his socks off, he who thought he knew everything about Einstein. In 1961, a German soldier was standing at his post protecting one side of the Berlin Wall during the war. Suddenly, he saw a little boy under three years old coming towards him. The boy explained that he had been separated from his family and that he wanted to cross the new wall to find them. The German soldier took pity on the boy and decided to go against direct orders to help him cross the new Berlin Wall. And this heroic act was immortalized by a photographer from afar. Although he was convinced that he was doing something good, the soldier was very panicked at the thought of getting caught and losing his job because of it. In fact, in the photo, you can see him turning his head to make sure no one saw him. He may be a soldier, but he is above all men with a big heart, because by doing this, he certainly helped this child find his mother. Margaret Hamilton is one of the women computer scientists and system engineers who have had the greatest impact on the history of science. In 1963, the young woman joined the Charles Stark Draper Laboratory at MIT to work for NASA's Apollo missions. She was in charge of developing onboard software for the spacecraft, which had to handle navigation and landing on the moon. She worked for many years on this project, which was considered crazy at the time. And in 1969, when she finished her mission, Margaret took a picture of herself in front of her laborious work to celebrate with dignity and symbolically the end of the project. The photo is exceptional and funny at the same time. Margaret Hamilton stands proudly next to the handwritten navigation software code that she and her team at the MIT Draper Lab produced for the Apollo program. The code consisted of no less than 17 registers, each consisting of thousands of pages. Stacked on top of each other, the locks were the size of Margaret Hamilton. To manage to get out so much in only six years, it is necessary to believe that Hamilton slightly squeezed the brain. But the good thing is that she became a genius, maybe even one of the greatest geniuses of the century. You are on a plane, you're sitting comfortably in your seat, you have room to stretch your legs, a stewardess comes over to offer you a hot coffee, the air conditioning cools you down, and as you look out the window, a question pops into your head. What were planes like in your grandfather's day? One thing is for sure, he certainly didn't have the same comfort as you. Well, do you want us to answer your question? Fine. To do so, we will answer you with a picture. But we warn you, hold on tight to your seat because there will be some disturbances. This picture is not a waiting room or the inside of a bus. It was taken from the inside of the 1930 airplane. Yes, we did say plane. Wooden chairs roughly fixed to the floor as seats, huge windows to give you goosebumps, kitchen curtains like grandma's to hide you from the light, two small light bulbs stuck to the ceiling, and let us tell you that there was no air conditioning, no life jackets, no oxygen masks, no carpets, no padding, no hot coffee. Back then, the priority was to get to your destination alive and well. This picture makes you feel very uncomfortable, doesn't it? It's a good thing you weren't born in the 1930s. Now you're glad you're on your plane and you won't complain about the length of the trip. You are French, so you are very attached to the Eiffel Tower, this sublime 324-meter building that never ceases to impress you every time you go to see it. Did you know that more than 60 tons of paint had to be lifted to paint it? And did you know that at that time in 1889, we didn't have the means we have today to paint the monuments? Would you like to know how the painters managed to paint a tower of this size? Come with us, we're going to Paris. And if you're already there, even better. Look up and see this magnificent tower. In 1889, just before the opening of the Eiffel Tower, the painters who were in charge of painting the tower simply decided to climb it with their buckets in hand without security. The picture you see here is real. The tightrope walkers paint the tower by simply holding on with one hand and using the other to pass the rollers on the iron bars, all at an altitude of more than 60 meters, defying the void. 
Are you afraid of heights just by looking at this picture? It's a good thing you weren't one of those painters. You would certainly have ended up badly. Now, every time you go to see the Eiffel Tower, have a little thought for these courageous painters. Between 1930 and 1945, the majority of girls in Germany were members of the German Girls League, a youth organization of the German Nazi Party. Girls between the ages of 10 and 18 entered the league to be trained to conform the fascist ideals. To do so, these women had to undergo a drastic training program. They were trained in household chores, wifely work, motherhood and exercise so that they would be physically proficient in gymnastics, sports and even fencing. Some became nurses, other accountants and still others served in auxiliary units of the Navy, Air Force and Army. The League leadership also organized campfires, summer camps, nature walks and used German folklore to inculcate Nazi principles regarding the status of young women in the family and society. Well, seeing these hunched over women being controlled like soldiers, it must not have been a happy time for them. But you have to believe that they served their country and that they came out of it well trained after the dissolution of the Hitler Youth Branch. So, what do you think of these rare and incredible photos? Which one did you like the most? Tell us what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to receive all the notifications and not miss anything from our upcoming content.